Hey, welcome to the Atmo uh, video interview with Felipe or Philip. I, I forget what was it again. Philip. Philip uh, Langlois. You right? Something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, not, not a good one. You don't have to pronounce the, the S, but uh, you know, close enough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How are you sure. doing? I'm doing good. Yeah. How are you? You got off of work? Yeah, exactly. Like uh, about an hour ago, I had dinner with the family and then uh, up to the podcast. Ah, uh, cool. Thank you so much also for uh, for having me. It's always fun to uh, geek out uh, with other uh, passionate people about uh, about word and math painting yeah, right? and VFX in general. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, yeah, there aren't cool. that many uh, there aren't that many map painters out there, so it's it's <laughs> it's, it's fun to find them and talk with them. Uh, we're a special kind of breed. We're like uh, generalists, digital artists, geeks that are problem solvers. Yeah, exactly. And, yeah, that's pretty yeah, much uh, <laughs> when you live uh, pretty well. So, um, yeah, you're located in Montreal. Um, Montreal, yes. Here, you've been working for, I guess, 20 years or a little bit more than that in the industry. You started out as a, a gamer, I believe, working games and then moved into map painting. That, uh, hey, it's, at, at first, it was pretty on enough. Uh, my first gig was on the, uh, an animated movie, actually. It was called uh, Heavy Metal uh, 2000. Like, uh, really, like, uh, back uh, back in the days, I, would do, I was doing a uh, comp. Uh, Comp work back at the time using Subtimage D. That was back in uh, the beginning of 1999. I graduated from the NAD, the NAD Center in Montreal. Uh, yeah, beginning of 1999. So, uh, yeah, so that was my first gig. Uh, after that, I went to uh, a studio called the Four Lane Studio. Uh, uh, we were doing uh, cinematic for uh, games at the time. So I didn't. I never like actually like work on my like, games, but it was more like cinematics uh, for games uh, for oh, the cool. 3DO console. I don't know if you remember that the 3DO, uh, 3DO console. Yeah, 3DO console. I know there was yeah. GameCube around 1999. <laughs> there was um, what was it, the Dreamcast or the yeah, there was the, the Dreamcast version? back then. There uh, we had the uh, PlayStation, the uh, first PlayStation, the Dreamcast, the 3DO. 3DO. Yeah, I don't remember the 3DO. I bet, I'm sure maybe some listeners will comment. Probably, on the video. probably. Oh, but 3DO yeah, with that, the that. jam, man. <laughs> <laughs> probably worth cool. a lot on your uh, these bins. Oh man. Well, um, how'd you actually get into map painting then? Since you worked in games, I actually do. I'm doing the opposite. I actually was doing map paintings for a while, and now I'm still doing map paintings, but for games. For games? So right, it's, it's flipped. Um, <laughs> Yeah, well, uh, like back then in Montreal, with there wasn't a lot of like studios that you couldn't work with. There were maybe like, uh, like six or seven, uh, so the work was quite limited. There were maybe, uh, like, uh, I would say like a hundred, I mean, maybe fifty people, like in the whole of Quebec, when they were to do this kind of work. Um, so it it was pretty much like whatever. So like some. Like uh, some places were doing like commercial, some places were more specialized, like uh, games, or uh, very few places were actually doing VFX at the time. Oh, uh, I can't what remember. Year was like this uh, again, uh, the nineteen ninety nine, like early nineteen ninety nine. Okay, yeah, uh, like yeah, let's so the end of the nineties, the beginning of the two thousands, and like there was like the High Star Buzz FX also that was doing Hybrid, which is I think it's the the only company that is still around today. Uh, yeah, hybrid that was doing uh, uh, VFX work, uh, but it was hard to get into these places without like uh, too much experience. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, working on both smaller studio was the uh, like the way to get experience and then to get more uh, because there was no uh, like a uh, math painting also department at the time. Uh, there wasn't something that was like very like implemented into the pipeline into the workflows. Uh, yeah. But to answer your question. Um, Lab. What really like um have like give me a uh, the like the drive to win map painting is uh, uh when I was in school at the NAD the center uh we had the Yannick Dussault probably heard of uh, yeah Dussault. yeah for sure exactly yeah so um yeah, yeah so it was really cool <laughs> because it was the uh, <laughs> yeah exactly yeah <laughs> uh, 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 just making sure because like some younger people sometimes they don't know okay so. Well, I, I guess sure. because he's not the viral type, right? He's not on the yeah, social exactly. media. Yeah, 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 yeah <laughs> He's for not sure. posting on Instagram and all that, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. 
Um, and so yeah, so we, uh, he was working as a, like a, I think he was like a VFX uh, supervisor on a, a show uh, that was shot in Montreal oh. called The Secret Adventures of Jules Verne. Back in the day, yeah, that's Secret another, Adventures uh, of what? What was that? Uh, Jules Verne, like the uh, Jules the uh, sci-fi author, like the very very old, like okay, of, uh, hundreds of years old. So uh, uh, yeah, so it's kind of a television series at the time. Uh, it didn't make it like really big, but it was so awesome to see it uh, like uh, we got to see it work yeah, how we was working yeah and uh, like being always being like a painter a little bit on uh, myself okay this is this is what i yeah. want to do well, i always <laughs> been fascinated by by uh you know like uh painters like uh, albert uh, with uh now we're peter ellen show that we're doing mm-hmm. like traditional math painting yeah uh, and yet to read that was not something that I could do because everything was in the computer, but yeah. to know the way that he was doing it, it's like the hedging of the tubes so kind of up with an epiphany back at yeah. the end. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Well, back then, so I think since... wasn't, sorry, go ahead. Wasn't Photoshop just like starting to pick up back I think then? I think Photoshop it... to reach. Yeah. Back at the yeah. time, I think it was the, the first uh, version with layers. Photoshop. I'm not sure it was version two of layers. <laughs> Can you imagine doing Photoshop without the without layers? Did it have yeah. masks? Uh, yes, exactly. Okay. You could have right. masks, but the, masks. it wasn't like a layer was not implemented. But uh, version three, uh, we had layers, so it made the whole thing a lot more and a lot easier. Oh, but man. there was no like digital photography at the time. There was no uh, um, yeah, so, so it was really really hard to find like you know, like. Of the, the source material, so you have to pretty much uh, paint everything. I remember my my first gig in all VFX, uh, or was it in math painting and VFX was the uh, yeah around that like 2001, 2002, yeah. something like that. It was a local what we called the Baroness and the Pig, and well yeah, just have to paint pretty much everything like and like then and sitting but things from 3D, you know, projected on cards. So it was really a uh, well, you didn't even have Nuke back to then. To say the least. Pardon? Well, yeah, you didn't have Nuke back then. You had oh. uh, the you had to do it all in Maya, and Maya is horrendous when it comes to projection. <laughs> nope. Yeah, but uh, no, in Montreal, uh, Maya, it took a long time to pick up. We were using Softimage. But, uh, You're still using what? Uh, Softimage. Softimage. Oh, Softimage. Uh, okay. Softimage. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's the cool following back in the day. I, I remember yeah, um, I, I was working at Whiskey Tree, and they were always just talking about nice. Softimage. <laughs> If that's what they were using. Um, yeah, yeah. At the I time. guess you're talking yeah, about just... the, also about the Softimage uh, 3D, like the XSI, uh, that yeah, like, XSI, uh, second yeah. generation. Yeah, that was the first generation. I don't know if you remember with the big ugly uh, square button on each side. Well, mm-hmm. I just when I was using it, I was still used to Maya, so my fingers weren't they they had muscle memory. I was just like, hitting the wrong hotkeys, and yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah. oh, XSI is ah, but I yeah, never no, really. It's... It, well, I was never in the cult folly, so I was like, ah, forget this, I'm just going back to Maya. <laughs> but I think it was only like, it, it was so uh, like it, Montreal, because like the software was made in Montreal, so. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, that's why like we we've kind of, uh, like uh, we, we all used it. I know some places in Japan were using it, but at some point uh, when it was bought by Autodesk, it, there was not enough like cult following, if you want to like to yeah. really and like. And then of course keep, keep Maya basically. comes down and buys it. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, exactly. It destroys so, uh, you. Guys destroy the competition, right? <laughs> but you know, like the 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 buy it for us that you have in Maya, that's yep. from, that's from uh, something I uh, we were yep. using that back in two thousand and four. Yeah. So uh, yeah, and now it I think it really got implemented uh, like well in twenty twenty. So like sixteen years later, that we get to have the same the same workflow as I know, it's like so long, right? But, Are yeah. you familiar with buy false at all? Since you may be familiar with. Uh, uh, I, I tried to do it a little, but um, since like there's not a lot of people that are using it, and uh, right now uh, we're uh, working at VNEG and the whole pipeline will get switched to to um, uh, Houdini, and yeah. it's kind of the same thing. I mean, it's like procedural thing, so might as well. Well, for 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 me, and might as well learn uh, Houdini. But yeah, I got to experiment a little bit with the uh, bite frost, and I think it's really, it's really cool. I just think it's it's too late. It fit. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> too late. And there are the not many uh, tutorial videos out there. I've tried. I was like, oh, it'd be nice to stay in Maya, but no. Houdini is yeah. a whole other beast. It's literally playing God in the software. It's <laughs> like, it's, it's amazing. CG like God. I always, 
I always been uh, like uh, not scared of it, yeah, but intimidated kind of, uh, by mm -hmm. it because uh, like the older older version, uh, you have to do uh, quite a bit of coding and the. Uh, but now, uh, yeah, I spent the past uh, two weeks uh, really like diving in, in, into it, like for the first time, uh, like full time into it. So, uh, and I, I must admit that with the latest version, a lot of things have been um, like uh, well implemented. And uh, the tool that I've been like already like com uh, compiled, if you want. Okay. Uh, so that uh, you don't have to build everything from scratch. There's always well, like a preset that already exists. The only thing is there's so many nodes that exist to, uh, so you, yep. you have to know them yeah. also. Right now I'm really focusing on the height shield and on the, the, the scattering systems mm -hmm. and well, like uh, the, the masking and the texturing. Yeah. Uh, but for doing terrain, uh, I mean, I always been like a, uh, World machine, Gaia kind of person, yep. but now yep. um, it's pretty much the same thing. But now inside a software, I don't need to go outside to generate all my my terrain and then bring in, so I can do it all outside with software. And I can change everything since it's all a procedural, nothing of bait. So I can always go back to add more like resolution mm -hmm. or change like you know, something of some math. So. I must admit that I find it like absolutely amazing to to. to yeah, no. To you said like you know Gaia. Yeah, are you aware of the the Gaia bridge that they have between Gaia and, and Houdini? No, I not, not. Yeah, there's a bridge. I haven't actually used it, but I uh, was talking um, to uh, and the creator of it. He said that there's a, a bridge that I guess you you make it Gaia, send it over to Houdini. I think you still have some of the similar sliders and stuff, and then you can okay, just do that's all interesting. the. Okay, because you can't do any um, uh, like everything's just it's it's uh, up and down x uh, y projected right in in Gaia, but then Houdini you can actually go into the Z and actually have layers and and everything make yeah. it more realistic. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all uh, based on the voxels, so you you have actually like the information to go like because yeah, like especially in World Machine, I think Gaia uh, is super super light. Nice. Uh, but it's just that when you know we have the cliff has to stretch and we cannot add yeah. like much. But then again, who do you need? You still have that, but you I think you have more uh, like you know, more weak since it's like it's, it's voxel, so you have like this like volumetric, you know, yeah, uh, yeah, procedural like yeah. So uh, yeah, it's really it, it's Houdini is like <laughs> it's definitely to me not very artist friendly until you wrap your head around it. So yeah. I, I view it as like a tool creator. Like I've made uh, like a cloud yeah. tool and stuff with it. Um, a snow tool. So just to uh, get some snow on the tops um, and some other tools. But okay. I want to actually transition into building full sets into it. I just, I'm so used to just, you know, just doing it in, in Maya. Um, yeah. I tried uh, playing with the Clarice uh, yeah. with the GPU version. Because uh -huh. I I always stepped away from Clarice just because of the CPU. I was like, ah, it's just so slow. Um, yeah. But they had like they had a, a GPU beta version that was that's that was they like, called. Um, I heard about it, but I never Angie had the chance or something. To play with it. And it's it's amazing. It's just it's just not. You don't have all the tools ready for it. But when that launches, that's okay. gonna be a game changer. Yeah. I think. But the, the thing is that with Clarice, uh, it's a fantastic tool for building stuff. Like we use it in a use it a lot you know did that but uh, the uh, big advantage I think with using like uh, the need is you know left to switch between software uh, that that's really something which I, I like to be really really cool because when yeah. you're always changing it kind of breaks your workflow or like sometimes like you know, it's late at night I have to go and I have this software to export, export it all and re-import. Oh, yeah. I just don't mm -hmm. want to do it. But no, and, and <laughs> who do you need? It's just so it, it's just uh, makes everything uh, we get a lot easier. <laughs> yeah. You know, like you know, once you know, of course, the the, the software. But uh, we're using uh, it with the. I haven't had the chance to really dive uh, like deep into it, but we're, we're using a renderman to uh, okay. to render it, and we're using uh, Solaris. Yep. Uh, which is like the USB implementation, and from what I've seen, it's it's um, it, it's super fast. We can have like new scanner, and it's almost real time uh, in in your yeah. viewport. 
So yeah, it's uh, Clarice is, is going to have some um, uh, some of the combat, like hard competition being treated for the, the yeah. Well, the, don't they expect you with Steve now? If Clarice, yeah, I, I I think so, but it's just that the, the if they don't have the that, Hydra viewport, then yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think like they they're still missing a couple of things, and uh, like the, the the renderer, it's super fast, but when you're using the um, a karma render, render in the uh, in, in Solaris. Everything it's it's almost real time. It's, yeah. it's crazy. I've seen some stuff with trees and like a old huge scatter and huge terrain. You just move your camera up and to the actually a down. I don't. I am not sure if it's GPU or not. probably. I would say, but I uh, I don't. It might be XPU. But the the I had actually learned. Um, Solaris on the fly of, at, at a studio because they were switching over to USD, and uh-huh. yeah, it's it's fast for sure. Yeah. Like it's it's fast. Uh, it's, it's, it's a uh, weird learning. It was at the earlier stages yeah. of, of Solaris because yeah. it was like the first release, maybe the second release. I don't remember. And so not okay. everything was there wasn't a lot of documentation on it, and there was like yeah. not everything was working properly. You had to figure out how to. It was a pain in the butt. But when and, you get it in, you're like, cool. This is really heavy scene. And it's going fast. But yeah. Clarice, I was doing some tests with their GPU with Angie. Yeah, it was yeah. going pretty quick. So it's going to be yeah. interesting if they can launch that nice. Um, but anyway, enough of the geeking now. I don't even think no, uh, any of these users even know what USD is. So USD basically <laughs> is just like universal. Uh, scene description. Scene description. There we go. Yeah. And so you can basically just go from one software to the other. And e- you can even render with different renderers. And they can pick up the, the shaders, which is, is what's really cool. Um, so yeah, uh, that's, uh, so you're, you've, you jumped into the, the techie side for sure. If you're getting into Houdini, that's for sure. <laughs> I, yeah. I mean, I think you, I always been uh, like attracted also by this, even though I'm an artist, I always uh, like uh, used a lot of CG in my, uh, the BMP work. Yeah. I, I love using like the AOVs also. Uh, yeah. Like I do a lot of uh, new, uh, I've been using my app for uh, like many, many years now. Uh, I think it's just a very like solid way to uh, just to work in general. Not on, like, yeah. Especially like these days when you have uh, like even if you're doing a forest or like the scatter in my lab, like in like you would match or to, like keep gen or stuff. It's it just makes it makes it easier because it's it's hard sometimes to find like the right but like, the, the right photo. With the right lighting, something that yeah. you're like it's the looking consistent for. lighting. When you can go off 3D, you get that consistent, consistent lighting, lighting that sells the shot, and, and then you can just paint on so top much if you more, need, right? Yeah, right, and you get so much more control, like the Z-Dip, and maybe you can like render your light, but uh, yeah. and then the like you just mix it in Photoshop after, and then we'll, we'll project yeah. it. So, and for me, it's it's it really is like the way of creating of a realistic about painting, unless of course you have like the like a photo shoot from the client, or uh, you work in a company that, like, well, pays someone uh, to uh, to go like have a like a photo shoot, but then you have to ensure that you have the uh, like the right height, the right altitude, the right the uh, the right perspective, the right lighting. So uh, yeah, there's a lot of variable. But once you have all of this, uh, it's crazy what you can do the level of realism. But since it's just uh, yeah. Really yeah, sometimes you get like lucky the... on the shoot though it's like i remember i had to yeah. do this cliff and they had just one of the artists i was always supervising um this 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 uh show and um one artist was just using based off like some angle like a specific angle i was like well i wonder if they had multiple photos of that cliff and it turned out that they had a bunch of photos just randomly placed. I threw it into some photogrammetry. And that oh, guy, yeah. the basic That's geo, that had a bit. Yeah, I was like, yeah. oh my God, that saved so much time. <laughs> yeah, this is yeah, the kind of sure. problem solving that I don't think people yeah. realize. Like, map painters, it's not just, oh, here's a clean the plate or here's a photo, paint on top of it. It's like a lot. Like, all, they're not very prepared on set, basically. It's like, you, then, you think people go out and take millions of photos and it was all be good. and But it's not like that, especially if it's if, like a. You have no time because they have a time limit, right? So they don't have that much time to shoot. Yeah, exactly. But and the, like not only that, like the the amount of green screen, or sometimes they don't really know what they want to put left in. And yeah. So the okay, if you're uh, working on well, doing a project, they'll want 
Exodus, we God and kings. A long time ago, it was not like briefly I am conceived. And um, yes, I am, they had like photo shoot of their wedding room, they had. So it's amazing. And just up, like those huge photos, like with a full little NK EXR with the full range, just a drop, listen, and just like build your shot like that. Looks amazing. Yeah, I can. So, yeah, cool. cool. But yeah, as you say, it, it, that really uh, very rarely uh, happens. It happens uh, more on like yeah, like high end shows, like the three Golay uh, like movies. But the, when you're working on more like a local project or like smaller or uh, smaller project, um, yeah, even just TV shows don't in even general, have, uh, like uh, yeah, maybe show about thing, but some uh, sometimes they don't even have like the fix and like yeah. on set the set, set supervision. <laughs> so we yeah, yeah, I mean yeah, you, you, you have to. You have to improvise a lot of yeah. the time. So as you say, it's like with problem solving. Nothing is like every project is different. So it's you so always need to time. adapt so uh, to the different. So yeah, it depends. Like it's a lot of time, the quality that I will output depends a lot of what I add. I like you know, as I say, input. I like, you know, like add lighters. Do I add uh, yeah, like on set the bigger trees or do I add like you know, chrome balls and uh, yeah. So yeah. Like, so it, yeah, that it's, really it's, makes the difference between uh, like a like a uh, like a big budget project and a smaller yeah. smaller project. It's truly a miracle that uh, any of these shows get made or get completed to begin with. Like it's just you think the unorganization and the timelines and deadlines and the amount of money they just waste and throw around. Like, how are we even putting this together? Like, it's crazy. Well, sometimes <laughs> it, it's too uh, it, like. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of uh, a lot of hard work sometimes that get uh, like put to it just to finish uh, to finish those projects on time. But, I mean, so, sometimes it's it, it's cool because uh, you get to work with your team and uh, you develop some, some kind of like a com- camaraderie. Camaraderie, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but and yes, since COVID, uh, like everybody is working from home, that I must say that. Uh, it, it really has changed the, you know, the dynamic in the latest sphere because it, even though uh, like I, I I could work from home, like, live from home, but I still go to to work like what like two times a week. Okay. Even if there's nobody at work, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I go there. So I like there's like one or two people like on on, on the thing. We're a team of seventeen, and I think I've only met like five person. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, like no. in person so yeah, yeah it's a bit depressing because yeah that, to me that was a, a big part of um if it's nothing that job nothing was the, the team that i was in. now i have yeah. to adapt everything is in so like i'll zoom or everything yeah. is remote so you don't get to have a like to exchange uh with, with people yeah the, it, i totally get what you're saying like that it's life changing for me because then I could just move out somewhere else and live in a more affordable area, um, and be with my family and stuff. So, but I do miss the the bonding of working yeah. with people in the studio. Like you get a little bit from the the video interactions and the Zoom calls and stuff, and collaborating, like you passing around. But it's not the same as being in person. Yeah. Um it's it is different. Uh, so like. Personally, I would have just, I, I want to stay working from home, but that is the one thing that I'm definitely um, missing for sure. The camaraderie, yeah. like what you were saying. Yeah. Um, yeah. So what, have you noticed things actually getting slower from working from home in, in the studios? For all my end, it um, seems good and smooth, but I don't, not every studio is the same. Like, do you think uh, it's been good? Uh, it depends. Uh, I've been working at two studios. Uh, when I when uh, COVID hit, I was working in a smaller studio uh, called the Alchemy Twenty Four, and I didn't see a lot of um, like a like problem. The the only thing that I had to because I have to use two computer basically because we have a Linux machine with all the three D software, but I still have to use my Windows machine for the Photoshop work. Uh-huh. Um, so yeah, so the the passing between the two machines uh, that that was a bit clunky uh, because I always have to like log in, like log out before logging yeah. in. Yeah, um, and also the, the the response in Photoshop it's not super great with the Wacom tablet, so uh, it's it, it's not as snappy as uh, as it is. Uh, as in 
left as it uh, as as it would be on the uh, on the local machine. Uh, now at Dinek, uh, it's 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 better because uh, yeah, I can have like both Windows machine and Linux machine open at the same time, so uh, it's a lot easier to switch from uh, from one to another. Yeah, uh, but I yeah I still have uh, like I don't have the pressure sensitive on my Wacom that just doesn't work and oh, I don't. Oh God! I, I, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, for, for math painting. It doesn't bother me so much because I rarely, very, very, very rarely paint uh, when I'm doing matte painting. Uh, when I do concept, uh, I, I paint a lot more. Yeah. But when I'm doing like strictly matte painting, I, I like I, I always work from like a, a selection or a, like stepping. That's why I don't really like need the idea the pressure sensitive. But yeah, when I'm doing like paint over or quick concept, I really, really miss it because my my touch, if you want, yeah, is not yeah, that yeah, yeah. I cannot replicate it. So I'm never happy with the work that I'm presenting because, yeah, like my uh, my transition or not like yeah. smooth or uh, like the, the the variety in brushwork is not yeah. it's, it's less bearing. But uh, yeah, it's um, it, since it's not like a concept that I would want to present. It's, it's really like a a quick paint over uh, just to uh, uh, discuss with the client or with the graphic supervisor. So it's not important that it looks not artistic but um, yeah yeah that, that i really missed but on the 3d side i didn't see any uh, major major issue so you um were supervising for the longest time and just recently switched over to the art again yeah yeah um yeah uh, uh, vision for almost 10 years and two years ago uh, yeah because when i went to cinecite the uh, I was the head of the the environment department there. That yeah. was really cool, really great experience. I really like enjoyed working with everybody, and like a, I had a very good also a, a department manager that was with me. So it, it was really nice. But uh, after what like five years, I think I stayed there. I like I noticed that like I, I couldn't keep up with the like the tool and the new technique and i'd felt like i was really like missing out then at, at the end they i just wanted to do my to do my like, shots or to yeah you know <laughs> continue learning about like the new tools uh, and yeah so uh yeah i took the decision to to leave uh said suicide when i went to alchemy 24. it's a small boutique place uh like smaller shows but i really got to um to uh yeah, to do like a lot more of like that 3D environment, like full yeah. CG, like environment. So like smaller shows, but it was perfect, you know, just to uh, to get back at it. And when I felt I was like to ready back. to, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. Uh, and and to start learning also like new tools, new techniques. I learned uh, Substance Painter when I was working there. Amazing. What? This software, I think it's so cool because <laughs> I always hated to win the uh, textures yeah. on yeah. the like the UVs. Uh, yeah, but I don't know. Just Painter made it so like fun. <laughs> it looks so great with like the acid that we, like every edges and like the occlusion, <laughs> yeah. the dirt. Yeah. And I don't know. And it, felt, and it it really is like a like a three D Photoshop. It, it, it. Yeah, yeah, it's it's, it's sick. I um, I'm actually not. I don't use it in that much. I do want to jump into it because I always just do just pure procedural texturing using like the, the shader or the renderer that I'm using, like let's say Arnold, I just use it to yeah. make a pure shader from Arnold. So it's basically almost the same thing, but like I just stay in there and I don't UV anything anymore. Okay. Um, right. And yeah, I know. so it's just, I just like procedural, like, uh, just, and then I just paint on top. It's like, what's the point? It doesn't have to be a hundred percent perfect. You just paint it's on true. top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So. Yeah, but I like working there. I got to uh, do some uh, 3D, uh, like 3D assets. Like they, those were my my first like real 3D, uh, like uh, asset. No paint over, nothing. Just like a pure 3D asset. That, that is. Oh, that's cool. Actually, in the movie. So yeah, so I really got to experiment with it. Up and when I felt that I was ready, maybe like, like to switch gear, if you want the like DNA get at it opening. So okay. well, maybe I can try this. You know, like because I I never worked. It. All this, it's here that I've been doing that. I've never worked with the company like up this south. Like only in Montreal, to me, we're I think over a thousand. Yeah. And so, yeah, so that's a, and where there's multiple like location. And 
there's no like separation because it was the same thing at Cinecide. Like there were, I think, like 300 in Montreal, and there was a lot of studio also on, uh, all around the world, but they were like more independent studio. Not a lot of sharing between the studio, but they were engaged with it. Yeah, I mean, sometimes I'm uh, working with the guys from Bombay. Sometimes, like right now, I'm working with the guys from London. Or sometimes I learning it with the people both in here. Yeah, that's it's, cool. It's, 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 it's a whole different from the, the, the dynamic, and the pipeline is very, uh, very, strict. <laughs> very strict. Very strict. Yeah, it's very strict. <laughs> but it's all. Right. I mean, you, you have to do with the uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. strict role. Well, you have to manage like that much people know about the water and saving. Would you pick, I mean, you got the small studios, you got mid studios and large studios. Would you choose? I've always found that maybe the, the mid studios are the best places to work at. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, maybe. Um, the well, thing you currently like... work at DNEG. It's not, it's not, it's not put down DNEG. They're a big studio. <laughs> no, so, no, yeah. no, no, no. I'm Two absolutely studios not. are awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well. And I say it's just that it's different. The, the, the thing that I like uh, about the, like the Navy is I only get to do like my part. Um, yeah. So I don't have because when I was working out, came twenty four basically. I was doing everything. I was doing like it. Yeah, like it becomes more stressful for sure. Yeah, exactly. Like it's more like fun because you get to do everything. But in the end, I spend like a lot of uh, like, not that much, but a couple of like uh, weekends and uh, like uh, evenings and uh, yep. yeah, the deliveries uh, like uh, sixty like uh, hours a week. For I, I've done much worse like in the past, but you know, like I, I have kids, I have a family, and it I've, I've done that too. And yeah, working at Zineg, that I'm only working on my on my part. Then everybody yeah. is is really like specialized on their stuff. So uh, the shop when it comes out. It's just the main thing. Yeah. Or, yeah. As I say, it's, it's different. In the in uh, it was very like being like a medium sized. Sometimes the, it was like, because yeah, sometimes you you have to work on the little shot, and sometimes you have to do like the whole shot by yourself. Yeah. So and then the hours and overtime starts to kick in, and you're like, oh yeah. god. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So uh, I don't know. I mean. Working at the Neg, uh, I mean, it's fairly, you know, I've been a year, I've been there like uh, six or seven months in now, so it's fairly new. Uh, yeah. I wrapped my first project uh, like two weeks ago, and I started a new project uh, to, like today. So, uh, so, what, so far, so big. So let's check out uh, your work um, on Atmo. Yeah. Um, it's sick. Let's do, let me share my screen real quick. Um, okay. Shame. I believe it's that should be this one. Do you see uh, your work, uh, the Atmo site? Yes. All right, cool. So congratulations also on your on your website. It's, and it's super cool. Why I saw it because the thing is most people are are posting on the other sites. I don't know if I can name them. But the, yeah, art but, station. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just that, yeah, there's not much like VFX like work that are featured in art station. They get like buried by uh, like yep. a lot of uh, really awesome stuff. But yeah, like if you want to really like uh, look for VFX stuff, you really have to look for it because it, it doesn't like matte painting. It doesn't get like featured. Uh, yeah, if it's that, photo real, they much. just skip right over it. If it's not super saturated with colors and a yeah. character or a girl with yeah. giant boobs, it's not gonna yeah. <laughs> get on there. That it's is just, true. <laughs> I got so this is I, I started working on this three years ago, but I was just sick of our station. It's not a thing. Okay. So, <laughs> well, thank you for like, doing there's that. Nothing yeah. for environment artists, and it's true. Yeah. And I just like I had a collection of, of artists and stuff. I was like, let's just start doing library. It just became a beast of its own, but. Yeah, so I mean, I will expand. I'm like, I'm gonna expand it to just be the whole AI stuff that's been going on. Uh, and people yeah. are looking for another location. I'm gonna yeah. clone the site and then expand it to uh, other departments. So like characters, like I'll, I'm thinking like having a switch up here that says just characters, and it'll just make the same organization, same logic, and everything, uh, but yeah. characters. So they won't be merging together and become all unorganized like okay. our station is. Uh, um, awesome. So since th I just actually recently added this button, uh, it says you just recently uploaded some images. It should show your work. Let's see. So it's the most recent. 
Yes, this is yourself. Yeah. So I could search you just for people that are still new to the site. I can't search for your name and go to your profile that way, but your work is also here. Um, and so let, let me actually just click on your name. And so tip, just for uh, other people that are watching, um, it does first load on Portfolio, which is like your organized work that you've uploaded. But if you want to see everything that you've uploaded, you go to All Work. Um, yeah, I still need to uh, to organize my stuff in the portfolio. Well, it's super. Now that you've um, uh, uploaded all your images in your uh -huh. All Work section, there's a folder here um, that you can now like say like put it into a new folder, and you can just quickly just add them to that folder. Okay. So it'll be like organized in that way. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Okay. No, no, that's what I was expecting. That then I had the time to look at your uh, the video, but uh, yeah, I figured that once it's uploaded, it's just a matter of uh, organizing them. So I had a uh, a little issue before with the previous person. I was David, uh, interviewing David Long, uh, Long, <laughs> and uh, the view black and white button wasn't showing up on people's profiles. So that's back. <laughs> okay. Okay. So. Um, yeah, so this is you can view all the the, the values and everything. So yeah, it's yeah, a very cool feature. This uh, let's check out your work. This is sick. Like it's all just obviously high quality stuff. Um, is there anyone specific that you'd like to talk about? Like how you I did mean, it? No, um, just click on anything. I'll tell you the the story behind it, like the backstory and uh, all my my memories of the <laughs> with with the, with this images. Yeah. Okay. The watch that was a yeah but was it like in 2015 something like that yeah. I, I mean it, it was a good experience but uh yeah i i, I still feel that about what happened uh with, with, with the, the, the company I, i'm not gonna name the the the, the company but uh, um yeah basically we ended up working like crazy because there was there, there was nothing yeah we have to do this crazy like you landscape and uh, we had no like render far because it was a startup in Montreal uh, but the people were awesome like the the owners of uh, like super awesome people that mm -hmm. were really like with us the whole way but like in the end uh it just wasn't true through me because then uh yeah my cat and my second daughter just got born um, and uh, my uh, my girlfriend had to like start working because of her her year off to uh, do a like parent the parental mm -hmm. leave something like that yeah it's coming to an end uh, yeah and uh, like I, I just I couldn't keep up like with what they were uh, what they were asking so uh, I ended up uh, yeah like quitting in that where we delivered like the, this was for the trailer and for one sequence and on particular and you know, like here like in the middle of the movie so what i said like i, I, I can continue so uh, -huh. uh yeah it kind of uh like uh, because like i was doing most of the my painting work so well uh, and uh, my uh, i had two other co-worker and this was really not something that we have planned that way, but uh, they both also quit for other reason. So, yeah. So, like the production, uh, like they ended up at, like they're a big mat painting show and ended up having like no more like mat painting clean. So, uh, yeah. But as I say, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the industry, it's it. The industry is definitely, uh, yeah tricky <laughs> so yeah, sure it is it is but yeah, uh, yeah i mean uh, like, like i'm i'm super glad with the how it turned out also with the movie and like the movie itself i think was really really good also and i say like as i say the, the experience also with the uh, like mm -hmm. working with the, the the people that started this company was it was but it, it was really good i mean but uh, yeah it's just too bad that it ended up that way but as you say i mean you have to adapt yeah, yeah and, and, and I, they I, still I think, pulled it off in the end, and it looked uh, it looked amazing. Like the whole movie really, really looked amazing. I think, yeah, I th I think definitely um, <laughs> students that are watching this could definitely maybe hammer in their mind that it don't be too scared to leave studios and go to other studios. Um, and the thing that I always say is like the studios, uh, they when they won't going to meet you. Uh, I mean. The uh, like I've seen laying off like, like studio or the, like laying off people like I remember back in two thousand and eight like the baby uh, like 
kind of, I'm saying, with crisis. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, the economy crisis of 2008. So, uh, yeah, like, yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah so, that, so that must so, have been yeah. freaking hard. I had no idea. I was yeah. still, in, I, uh, that was 2008, so that would have been in college at that point. But um, yeah, I was not in the industry at that point. <laughs> I was one of the lucky. I was working back then at Digital Dimension. It was one of the only place that we still had work yeah, back then. But yeah, it was, it was slow. And I think we they made us work like four, three or four days a week. So a big pay cut, but I mean, it was death or yeah, basically or nothing, people, right? Yeah. yeah, exactly. So, but uh, yeah, as you say, I mean, it's, it, it's to find the balance, you know, between, okay, wh- what do I want to do? What the studio asked for me, uh, for, from me. So don't be scared of yeah, like changing place. If you feel that it doesn't uh, like, uh, like when it feels you. They take your advantage need. of you basically. Yeah, right. exactly. Yeah, because they'll yeah. ask you to do more and more and more, and you're like, "What the heck? This is out of my control. It's not my fault." You know, a lot of times, like you pull yeah. overtime, it's not even your fault. Yeah. I remember I got so yeah. angry. I actually yeah. kind of regret of how angry I got at one point, but <laughs> for this situation, but it was just like they were working all this thing for like six uh-huh. months or something ridiculous, and all of a sudden they come to me. It's like, "Uh, can you fix this for us?" I'm like, "What are you talking about?" I was like, "Yeah, we have to. You have to work over the weekend." I'm like, "What? Like you've been working on this forever?" I was furious. The Friday <laughs> at four, also that they come to see the, the to see you to say that, you know, and yeah. on the Friday is like, I I have plan, you know, during the weekend. Look. Exactly. And not, then you come to me anymore. at the last second, I'm like, "What the heck?" <laughs> yeah, 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 but it's I, a, it's it's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right. yeah, not yeah, all studios are like that. Like you can, you know, hunt yeah. around and stuff. And um, the I think a l- I mean, it's less and less like that because the the, the studio that has been doing that, they, they lost a lot of people. They have bad reputation, but and they, they end up uh, having like like more problem hiring people. Yeah. And if you keep losing your core team, you're not going to you know, develop your. Like your expertise on your your look, you know, you're you're just becoming like a service company, and it's just doing what they're asked in. But yeah. you know, the, 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 I think the the good studios are the one that one needs to keep their a core team. That you know, yeah. it, it comes also with the um the the the, the, the work the culture, the, mm-hmm. the the quality that you put in. Yeah. So, yeah. So let's uh let's just talk about this image for a bit. Like yeah, yeah. I noticed that there's um a bunch of three D models. Yeah, that you yeah, have in here. And we don't it, see them. Is, is it mostly three D? Like it looks like there's three D yeah. here, three D, three D, three D. Basically, it's a simple uh, uh, geometry, and it, it's photos, uh, photos and paint uh, projected on it because that was a stereo uh, project, so everything okay. had, had to be like projected on the, uh, on the three D geometry. But uh, yeah, so um. Uh, yeah. So, like, was this a um, like what what was the resolution for this? Like, the, in and uh, the res- original resolution the lens probably for this. And it was uh, twenty five plane, I think. For yeah, for it's this. huge. Yeah, yeah, it's huge. Yeah, it's, it was a four K show, and like I could say, like a stereo, and uh, mm-hmm. I had to cover like the whole sequence. So that was part of the master, uh, like the the master of sets and sight no for this, but yeah, because we had like a, a, because you can see that it like the angles are kind of like doing some weird stuff. This is uh-huh. the pitch between the, I think we had like six canvas, uh, okay. like that, were, that was covering like the old 360. I didn't need the old 360 for this particular sequence. So I only uh-huh. like a uh, crop, I think I have like three caverns uh, on this. But yeah, basically like a good, uh, like three, he doesn't have to have a lot of detail, like on the geometry, I think. My memory is good. It's only well, you like can see over here. There's no. To, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's just yeah, and then you just but use your photos. But we had the and... good, the uh, good photography. Like he, it yeah. goes back to the what we said like earlier. Like we had good photography. So like the lighting was good. The altitude was a little bit higher than what we needed, but uh, we still got away. I think uh, quite fine with it. But uh, and then we still had to do quite a bit of research also because. That this is New York in long well, nineteen seventy six, I think that would be a uh, big place. Uh-huh. Uh, so we had to replicate like the the New York from the nineteen uh, seventy six, I think. Yeah, 76. Mm-hmm. So how long did this uh, shot take you? About 
Well, this covers, I think, uh, maybe like uh, 10 shots or something like that. So, oh, okay. uh, like this side flow, uh, I had to help a little bit from other people. Um, so, so for maybe I think a good three months. Because uh, well, as I say, when we when we when I claiming we have nothing that we have to deal with, like doing the layout of the city like mm-hmm. first. Yeah. So like placing cubes or and uh, yeah, like uh, stitching the photos, no, it's, it's really the photos. It's nice, even just like if you your focus of detail, even just for the cities back here, it's like you have the little gradient. Even for these little teeny buildings there, like a lot of people like, just say, "Well, just put in haze and cover the whole thing," but you still have a gradient fall off on always. those. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah it's, always it's, because it's the, otherwise it looks. Uh, yeah, a lot of people, the like especially like in student people that are less experienced, like it, you, you have always two uh, axes of haze or that it you have your your scene. And there's always a white also. And sometimes there is a Y at the bottom and Y at the top too. Awesome. Yeah. So uh, yeah. So that really creates the the complexity of a uh, of a uh, the city the of an atmosphere. Yeah. yeah. That's really nice. Uh, let's go to uh, other ones. Um, the projection on that must have been a pain in the butt, by the way. <laughs> to split all these. Yeah, because we had to do a lot of all parallax. These layering. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but the, the, the thing that I, uh, that I did was, and instead of going like ropes like that, or uh-huh. I ended up uh, selecting like you know building that that I you know, that didn't have any like interaction, so I was able to minimize a lot the amount of layer because if I was doing it by rows like that, it would have been like um, like thirty layers, something like that, uh-huh. maybe like twenty, but selecting them so i didn't care if the uh, like well after that building was the, the same layer as the like uh, one that was further away as long as yeah. they didn't touch each other uh, yeah. that, that was my big concern you know so i ended up i think i did like five or six layers for, for this okay so cool. uh, yeah so it, just finding a way to win it because also like photoshop uh, like we were uh, using max also <laughs> for this and uh yeah max uh like uh yeah, you remember like the cylinder uh, thing? Uh, I don't, I don't, well, they were calling uh, the back cylinder in... thing. You mean yeah, projections but... on cylinders, or no, no, no. I mean the the machine, the 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 back machine. Uh, anyway, oh no, I'm not, I've the, never. Yeah, I've it, never it really can, been a huge Mac guy. Not handle this kind of resolution <laughs> and this amount of uh, of layering. It, the machine Ugh. was just I running mean, this is 24K, so K, right? Or 24K, yeah. you said. Yeah, if I remember even Photoshop correctly, alone, it was, like like none of that, you wouldn't need at least 128 yeah. gigs of memory. Like, shoot. Uh, yeah, it, it was crazy. It was crazy. So that's why, like, uh, like reducing the amount of uh, of layer because I remember at first, like our first like uh, projection test, we're doing like by ropes, like in depth. Uh-huh. We ended up having like three, and I, if I remember correctly, like uh, I could not even load everything into into Photoshop into one file. I had to split them into multiple files. It, it should not be with two works, but by doing it like that, I was able to like yeah, like uh, five or six layers, with a lot faster. Um. So, what's the most guess, recent one you've done on here? Uh, most recent, like all of this is pretty old, boy, because the uh, yeah, I'm not able to show like since the like, yeah. like stuff from being egg or from suicide that all uh, so. But the, yeah, like I've uh, cast the uh, uh, that, that, that was a cool experience. Also, uh, I was working at the uh, Melbourne Food Studio at the time. I, um, yeah, it was what like I really a, like about this one is that you have the rim light on all the plants. Oh yeah, each yeah. and individual one. It's nice. Um, yeah, uh, so yeah. was this? I'm assuming this foreground was like 3D, and then everything yeah, this else. Was made maybe by this the was 3D based here. The, yeah, exactly. So. Like the math line is like a little bit behind the the last tempo that you would see, and after that, it's all uh, it's all BFG. Uh, yeah, I didn't have much uh, like you've know, played for like photography, so uh, I, I used a, a bit of 3D, you know, again like cubes and stuff like in the background just for the the, the, the city. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, and the rest was uh, yeah, it was for like photo montage. We have photography montage, really. Yeah. So with these, 
with the the bushes everywhere and then you had the rim line on each one did were those individual bushes uh cut out individually and then you just offset in and painted in the, the rim light or like were, did you uh, have any like tricks or hack that you got it, it's a lot of them <laughs> yeah i know i'm kind of uh, lazy on that but i am lazy it's kind of a and it, it's just that when i i i find like a photo that really works mm-hmm. i really like milk it like really, oh my yeah. God, it's always best to have the large photo that just yeah. gets covered all of it, and then like yeah, a exactly. thousand and individual posts. Yeah, <laughs> because everything is is lit by the the same light. And like it, there's a light consistency, a color consistency. Yeah. Also, like mm-hmm. I'd rather spend like a like even the sometimes like a couple of days if I can afford it, uh, looking for like one or two pictures that is going to get me like eighty percent there. Yeah. Rather than spend like a week just mashing photos together that don't like really fit, and then you like that's where you use the real engine. Yeah. And it's where like the color doesn't necessarily fit the, the atmosphere, and also mm-hmm. it's not like it, it just also like the the type of rock uh, that it's going to be like different from like a, a different like a photos that you were. Uh, that you get like from the internet and like the mountains, like the shape of the mountains, like the, yeah, like the, the, the sand, the quality of the, the sand, the rock. The, so by, by spending more time, I think like looking for one or two picture, like, as you say, like big panorama and we have a mm-hmm. lot of things that you can grab and just to build an environment like that to win like that, the, the, the best. Well, uh, result that I got uh, was yeah. from using, like doing as least to the image uh, as possible. Yeah. So, are there any specific sites that you love using, or do you just use Google Images to get your photos? Uh, I don't use Google anymore. We need that. I'd rather pay to have good photography, like MathPaint.com was really, really good. Uh, like at first, I'd, I wasn't too sure. But uh, yeah, like in the past like year or so, they really got some really good, and you can also have access to the uh, the digital megafib. But every um, uh, I don't remember the name of the format uh, like that. But um, yeah, so you can because using like working in raw format, but it's there's just something. You know, there's a texture, and there's the range that you don't have from yeah. like JPEG. Uh, yeah, which yeah. is really really nice. So it's a better um, higher fidelity, and you can crunch some of the brights and get to the levels you want. Yeah, exactly. um, because do you have also like uh, for the age. Sorry, you just got no, keep on. Like uh, let's say like you want to cut out a mountain, you'll always have some style. And it's really this one thing. But when you have like the your raw, you can just uh, remove like a bit of the exposure. Sometimes you can reduce only like the highlight. So you kind of rebuild that thing, the, the, that phase that is really big yep. um, to like a JPEG image. So uh, yeah, you get a lot more detail, a lot more like richness and yeah. And then you can add your atmosphere of a top of it. So, yeah. Yeah, no, I'm definitely. The map paint, I think it's mapaint.org, is it? Or is it dot .com? I don't know. That, but dot they com. do I have some map high res photos is an in old, there. Uh, website that yeah, is normal, normal and would yeah. exist, but I think it's mapaint.com. I'm just going to... Yeah. Do you, so do you have any specific uh, workflows on matching your brights and your blacks or uh, I think it's really uh, bright uh, I usually read it's cheap there you go uh, yeah if it's really bright I like to uh, expose down uh, but like you yeah, always have your node on top of everything so that you don't like work with the the we expose down uh, like baked in on, on your on your image uh, if it's too dark, uh, just uh, it can work with the expose, uh, expose up, um, and really like crunch also, like uh, just to make sure not necessarily like working, uh, but like when it's really crunch, but just uh, by choosing it. So if if on your highlights, when you bring your image down, like really really dark, if all your highlights are like roughly like the same intensity, the same like color temperature, you know, in the, the, the right the ballpark, and the same thing for the darks also, especially when you're working, let's say for a a night shot, and it's really important to really like crank your exposure like ridiculously high, just to make sure 
that then, yeah, your everything is at the same level because then, yeah, you have a couple of surprise sometimes when you come, come really likes to be left. Yeah. Um, I've always felt if, that like the, just using the levels adjustment and cranking, you know, down the highlights or cranking up the, the, the blacks, it will really exponentially train your eye. Because then you're learning like what kind of colors are in the blacks more, what kind of colors are in the in the highlights more, you know. Instead of just kind of looking just uh, black and white images, I feel like it's just uh, you because if you have those consistent, like what you're saying, right? You you have a more cohesive image. Um, <laughs> but it's definitely a nice track trick for students or juniors uh, to uh, speed up their learning curve. I feel for sure. <laughs> Yeah, and it helps also for the like the quality control also actually in the end. Uh, but as you say, also uh, looking at the black and white, that really really helps it also uh, because sometimes you have some surprise. You know, you think like you have like the light uh, nailed, then you put in black and white and say, okay, where's my light? But it's only like a color trick, but that that's no good. Like you need to actually have like a like a value a, a good value range in your in your image. Yep. Um, this one is sick. Uh, it's like it has a but a more like a buttery value to it. You know how like some images look very buttery. I don't know how does that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess I guess. <laughs> but uh, that's that's uh, that's cool actually. How uh, I I did this one because I couldn't. Uh, that was like a long time ago. That was maybe twenty ten something like that. And uh, yeah, so I couldn't find a lot of what uh, like photography also because this this depicts like a Tarzan in the Alberta it was for a Canadian movie uh, back in the day. And um, so what I ended up doing for a lot of details is I I bought um like a, a concrete calling the country at the like the hardware shop, and I would just like make piles out of them and just make a composition like on the table and oh, cool. uh, light it yeah exactly like they're doing kind of a miniature so i did a lot of like different stuff i was doing quite a lot of that uh, at the time because uh like i i wasn't like very good at cg like i wasn't feeling like uh, secure enough doing like some cg um, at the time so uh but uh, yeah i always been like taking photos at doing that painting so okay well i'm gonna create my own uh, my own reference so uh yeah so I, I, but so yeah that was a lot of fun that was the big like the final shot like there's a big chamber movements well but like how long, the ending how shot, long did like, this didn't take look you? that good but i'm still happy with the map painting like the light being in the building oh uh, yeah no it's, it's great like the perspective is is really good you even have like the the small bits of mountains there they're just you know feel it even further back and you just is this the whole perspective is just really nice um how long did this it's, take you to do maybe two months like for the well, from the, the the concept to the final shot oh um, yeah and again that was like a um, 10 something like that. It, it was more of a uh a vertical shot so i think it's like 10k height by like 4k and wide it's not a it's not your usual your typical little map painting for so would you have like if it was cropped in would it have been like cropped in like in this area and then just kind yeah, of pan up like that yeah. and the camera isn't moving there so was yeah. it a nodal pan or did you have to still project no, stuff i had to uh, to do the projection uh like uh, like to model or like everything like i like i said like the final shot i mean i still put the image in my portfolio but don't put the final shot in my uh show real anymore <laughs> yeah. because yeah there, you, you could tell like at some places like hard edges and yeah well um, the other day it was just too big of a shot but I, that was me like back in the days oh yeah i'm gonna do that all by myself <laughs> <laughs> Like well, and like uh, when you're working like six weeks on that, you know, they're like, when did I, when did I do that? When I say <laughs> yes to this, but you know, the, these are the like looking back, these are the the, the best way, the, the best experience. Yeah, because uh, I like I got invited also to the show premiere, like on the red carpet and everything. So yeah, that that that's you know, look, working on smaller shows like that. That's the real beauty. It's like you really like part of the. Uh, to big show that's really they cool i haven't it. had the chance to do that 
Um, but I get it. Like when you're with the smaller team, it feels like it's yours. You have more ownership over everything, right? It's like it's your baby yeah. kind of thing. Um, and just uh, the fact to uh, like talking directly to the director. Yeah. That's excellent because like uh, when you're working on the big place, like you, okay, I have to satisfy my eat, then I have to eat. Satisfy uh, like the supervisor, and then I have to satisfy the VFX supervisor, and then it goes to the show supervisor, and then to the director, and it can always go back on you. So, yeah, it's said that you you lose the uh, yeah. Yeah, that's the issue. Yeah. The, the hardest thing um, with VFX or with film is is the too many too many uh, hands in the kitchen. It's like you, you tell one person one thing and then they tell a person another thing. It's just like this phone, tell, you're playing telephone and yep. then it's too many steps for, it's too many steps to get to approval and everyone has their own little opinion and then eventually gets to the director and he's like, uh, I like the first one. And it's like, you just wasted your time. Yep. It's, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. I've seen that. I don't understand why time. it's set up like that. It's, it's crazy. It's so inefficient, but yep. it is what it is. <laughs> Yeah, and then you exactly they wonder why if the fix it costs so much from yeah, as we yeah, said, it's exactly. so much. Yeah, exactly. It's like you I feel like we should be able to take over filmmaking in general and just make it cheaper, more straightforward. It's like ah, whatever it is. It's but, a rant that we. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, I heard that so many times. I like most of the people that end up like starting their their smaller studio. This is why they want some of it. I don't know. They wouldn't want. Like we want to stay small and be like very, very effective, you know? and uh, and yeah, like it, it, it works. But in the end, if you want to do like big movies, uh, yeah, you have to we'll always have to like to grow and like to you know, get investors, and then you have to grow but more, even and just then like, you end up uh, being a big place. And... But even just like have, maybe have like a VFX person that the, that's a director that understands that side, you know, yeah. instead of like I I don't know I I mean I. Don't have hey, experience in maybe directing have, anything. Maybe you have so. something there. Right? <laughs> <laughs> They'd be like, ah, it's more complicated than that, Jordan. So trust me, believe me. <laughs> All right, so this image is, is 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 great. You have the same like awesome uh, perspective in here. Um, the I it's unfortunate because I know on your site you have a before photo of this. Oh yeah, I did um, it on both of Yeah. I don't think you do, but the thing I, I do want to implement on the site, the capabilities that maybe attach a before photo with the new photo and just maybe uh, like yeah, just swipe be between yeah. or maybe scroll down or something, but it's like still attached yeah. to this page. Um, yeah, but, but that's, that's something I'm going to have to figure out on work on. But yeah, I know yeah, that. you... that'd be great. That'd be a really good idea because yeah, especially for bad KB, you always want to see like the before and after. Yeah, exactly. Because your before was basically like, it did not look like this at all. <laughs> like, Absolutely. You had this that's foreground, not... you had yep. no snow and all yep. this was yeah. something else. Right. So like it was various, like it's a, it's a good basic because it gives you like the first step in the but uh, yeah, everything had to be changed because it's a, it was a French movie called uh, The Bag of Marbles. Uh, a really good movie to have the chance to. Uh, That's to familiar. See, see. Bag of Marbles. Uh, it's, it's a classic. It's a classic book. It, it, it's a, and especially in France. Uh, yeah, it's a, it takes place during like the Second World War. Like uh, two brothers that get separated from their parents and now they're trying to get back to the Philippines and find them. And uh, yeah, that was one of the opening shots of, of the movie. And they, yeah, again, like a big band, but that, that was an old old band, so I didn't have to split the, like everything in oh, two nice. years. <laughs> oh, but uh, yeah, still, it was even though, uh, like, I had a plate, I had like a, uh, like, little houses and then greedy, like, super simple, and I scattered with my name uh, just to get, like, the, like the, the perspective, the, the scaling. So you the had lighting, um, um, these uh, homes as, like, 3D models that you just scattered yeah. around? Yeah, exactly. But was they, it from they, a they, kit? They, like, where'd you get those models from? Oh, I just modeled that. Like, it's it's really like primitive. Like, to, like we saw the walk, so it was really like yeah. basic, uh, basic volume. So no windows, nothing. So yeah, I just okay. Uh, and for that, yeah, and it, uh, I said that now that I remember the uh, the house in the foreground, uh, we were with, um, three D like pushed uh, like more. Uh, uh, a lot more detail of this CG big in the Yeah, there yeah, was a. Uh, yeah. Oh, you're talking about right. these zones? Uh, nope, the the one the big ones. Right here. Yeah, yeah. So uh, this is like a like 
bigger CG, like better CG with uh, no, with a lot of paint over. And yeah. again, for the all the snow, what I ended up doing was uh, just a uh, photography. Uh, like but what yeah, is just... probably called though? I, I know that in French it and it, it's become but that was so but but I did. Like, yeah, so you enamored, sold... like a like the white the white powder that you put in the fridge uh -huh. yeah, for the odor. I don't know, I was a Calvin in Oh okay. So the the frost in freezers you're saying that comes out? Yeah, well, it's a, it's a little powder that you put in the freezer to eliminate the odor. It's a white oh, powder, oh, basically. Oh, baking soda, baking soda. Baking soda, yeah, thank yes. you. Yeah, baking soda, <laughs> here we go. So, yeah, it's a, uh, like, basically, yeah, I build a, uh, like, a made out of wood, just, uh, like, a couple of, uh, like, a uh, new chain structure, and uh, I have a, like, a floor structure, and I just, like, spray I uh, baking soda on it, and, like, you know, took photography on it, and just, like, placed them. Oh. Yeah, I I, I, oh, nice. I don't do that as much because like it's so much easier now to do it in CG. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. Back then, for me, that was really the way. It was just like doing that like miniatures. <laughs> like, I, I must you... admit that I I do miss it. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, you like, get your hands that. dirty, you know. Like yeah, I'm so yeah, I, I personally, I'm, it gets exhausting sitting in front of the the computer all day. So it's like it'd be <laughs> nice to go out, take photos, and bring yeah. it back in and. You know, it's, it, it becomes more of a physical job instead of like, okay, I'm using my fingers. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? Absolutely. Um, you know, you have no idea how I agree with you. Uh, I've done that so much. Uh, we can talk a little bit about race uh, after, but yeah, uh, only for that, I went to the whole Montreal. So uh, yeah, so like the, the bill that you see on the, I was sitting in the mid ground, like uh, at the bottom of the stairs. And that was uh, like about a bang or two that I do it in the old Montreal. It's tricky because you have to go up, you know, and so, yeah. well, so, so sometimes it's, you have to find uh, more or less and go ways uh, to, uh, to get into <laughs> some place. But yeah, I, yeah, no, it's part of the, in part of the, of the charm, you know, when yeah. you're doing that thing at that way to, is to find your own, uh, your generate mm -hmm. your, your own element. So it's, it's, but it's not only the, the creating the image that is, Creative, yeah, it gets creative. It's how you do it, also. So, getting out of your comfort zone, okay, the same. Getting out of your computer, just taking your alpha bag, your pee. If, you know, if you get a four hit, I was working uh, mostly uh, in my, uh, like, a freelance where I was doing the, 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 those shots. So, like, I, I did to decide basically, you know, like, however, I, I want to do it. So, I'm not the. I don't have to be sitting in front of the computer for 40 hours. There's nobody in the base. But he's looking. What I what I'm doing. So I just like every week I would I would send them like a, a, a an update. I mean they don't care like how I did it as long as it, as it looks cool. As long as you get when the you're job done. When you're working for a studio or a big studio, yeah. and we cannot afford to do it. But well, yeah, this um what. I think a lot of um, people learning map painting don't really understand is that sometimes smaller objects or smaller scale makes it feel a lot larger. And it's really good that these are, you know, they get smaller and smaller and like they're small little images, but it still makes it feel big. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, yeah. So I, I come across a lot, a lot with uh, juniors and mid that they'll, Make all like, well, this is supposed to be large, so let's just make it super large. But it's just like, nah, you gotta play with the scale, like, make it make it yeah. smaller, and you'll be surprised that actually it feels larger than this. If Especially when it's in relationship with other stuff. And one big thing, this big thing would look yeah. really, really big, exactly. So, yeah. Like this, yeah. like the tower right here, it's like it's 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 huge, but then you got these small, yeah, it's 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 nice. And I like the the pocket of light that you have back yeah, in yeah, here, yeah. too. In yeah, yeah I love cool. doing that. This is really what I love that the demo to do is like pockets of light, you know, like global yeah. lighting or just mm -hmm. like super dramatic. It's it's very cloudy, but you get like a slice of light from your, uh, and then it's just revealing your main level, your main subject. Yeah, of course, I might not be in that. Uh, let's see. What else we got in here? Um, 
Okay, if you click on a couple of images from the race and make a bit of the oh, running. here's the original plate. Oh yeah, and... yeah, you can yeah, you can see that. Yeah. That, that was cool. That was the uh, when I was uh, working at also at the mills. Oh, uh, I got to do some uh, uh, VFX uh, super medium on and also on set the uh, VFX uh, super wide. So it it's really cool because the uh, yeah, there's uh, you asked for exactly what to. Like they asked you, okay, well, you know, what should we do? Like, you just add them to, like, okay, did they give them. you, were these photos taken on set when it was like a not snowy day or, or were I these took, other I took photos them, you found? I think like uh, two days later when the snow was melting, it was like a uh, late winter or early spring and the snow was melted a couple of days after. So I said, you know, why not? I should yeah. go back <laughs> on the set that. I will have exactly the same instead of, you know, like they said, like trying to find, like on the internet, a couple of the kid, like trees that sort of kind of look like that. They don't really have the same lighting or they don't really have the same perspective. Yeah. But I mean, this is shot in Montreal, so just like when Might there as well it, go. <laughs> yeah, and be, yeah, I'll have a couple of trees that I, uh, I photographed for another show that the lighting was pretty much exactly. Like, so yeah, like, and I made that maybe like two or three days that look was done. And yeah, nice. it's, it's pretty seamless. Uh, what was the one that you were saying that we could check out? Uh, there's a race trap too. Actually, I think, oh yeah, those ones. Like yeah, any of them, like uh, the first one with the bone so that. Yeah, yeah, I'm sitting up So, so uh, yeah, again, no, uh, uh, Google that. The Google back is a really, really good tool out so just to, uh, to scout to like a location. And uh, because the, uh, that was for a movie after uh, the movie race, uh, it took place in the 1930s. So it shouldn't like to look like really modern. And, uh, but I found there was a very old school and I don't remember J John had, but, but kind of fitted that it was kind of, you know, time it. They had a for the football field, it's a place um, and on the south stream of Montreal called Noel Gay. There was another college there and there's kind of an old abandoned like, like football field uh, but with really not modern equipment. And so I went to all of these places and I took like the photography but like at the right time of day and at the right height. So I had to bring a ladder but like to have this perspective. Uh, so like uh, getting there like at five in the morning uh, like, uh, with the ladder you kind of everybody's looking at you kind of uh, I, uh, <laughs> yeah, kind of I remember weird, I was taking know, a photo but... and like a security guard came over to me he's like excuse oh, me yeah, that, I'll, I'll yeah, take a photo I was like I'm just yeah. doing it for like for BFX it's not I'm not spying on you guys <laughs> if you have a card that's with the photographer and it, it works better because I mean, you're at uh, I've been able to uh, to win but too well I don't know, just so it'll be like walk it. out yeah. there. Yeah, exactly. But, like a, you kind of look more professional when you yeah. have a car and you present to yourself. A photographer but, car. Okay. That's, yeah. That's a good little trick for anyone listening. <laughs> <laughs> I never thought but, about uh, that one. <laughs> yeah, no, I just, it's, it's, yeah, I think they sometimes they need, they need to like, uh, like Be resourceful. do more or less illegal <laughs> stuff you know, to, to have what you want. But you know, although that's part of the fun of it. Um, yeah. But yeah, like for for this thing, well, I uh, because I thought that my thing was pretty much coming from the right place when I put like the with like the photons because like I uh, think the trees on the and the right, it's from a location, trees on the background, another location, the football field, another location, and the school on the left, another location. But I really took the time to and uh, like we have a little thing to research how we could. At what time should I go photograph it like to have this kind of like so when I assembled all of these things, like it it took maybe like two days of uh, like to taking the right picture. Mm -hmm. And but in the end I, I was able to like uh, to do this map painting in maybe like two days. Wow. Because I don't yeah, have to when do you anything. get the right photos, man, it's it's like a hack. It's a, you're you're doing a cheat code. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. But I mean yeah. why and I don't understand why like some company that oh no we don't mean we need to sit in their computer well yeah no I just gotta take a photo and just gonna to bring it in 
it's going to work. I love betting. It's going to be photo real. It's going to be super fast. Yeah. Same thing as well as this one. So I, it's the same location. This is that I went to take the, the, the picture and send some of you playing to have the, 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 the light. And this yeah. is super hard to have a good uh, shot like over a chest like that. Yeah. There's no light. Uh, so it's it's very hard because a lot of time I'll tell you if you were, you were tempted to have too much uh, an atmosphere. But then it looks like a thing it looks like wanted to put more machine so we kind of lose the the natural aspect I mean, so we, yeah. it's a very fine balance between well, and, yeah because it's not like a magical thought this needed to be like grounded it absolutely real with in reality so, yeah yep um so let's see this let's actually are you cool with jumping over to the community section and just like checking out some stu uh non-senior level work and give you some Absolutely. feedback yeah yeah i didn't right. have the time to uh, to uh, select anything but thank you have everything well anything no we just do it live right you don't select yeah. anything yeah. um Let's do it. so what's cool about this site is that uh you can filter it through all the different yeah. skill sets so you have the senior whips if you're working on something, they'll still go over here. And that's why I'm trying to keep the site organized, like only senior level quality stuff on the homepage. And and this would be great for recruiters, you know, if they're looking for people. But let's, uh, is there anything that you want to check out or just uh, review? It's up Same to you. Cool stuff you, you, pick, you pick one. Um, I, okay, it's still growing. It's not that I don't have another page. It's still a new site. <laughs> we need more people on but, this site to upload stuff. But <laughs> the thing that I can that I can uh, say just by looking at small thumbnails like that is the yet you know automatically if the image of like works. But yeah, especially if you put in black and white like, like that. So looking at your own work in in like a small uh, like a like a, a smaller format. If you would like it, like they just the yeah, this image with the house, if you were uh, maybe I would, like, just go up with it, just the next this? up, yeah, that was just uh, down, down, down. Oh, this one, the yeah. house, this one, yeah. This one, yeah. So this one, I think, is really good because like you have the big dark house, uh, which is contrasted with the uh, like the you know, the, the, the bright sky. So the silhouette of the house is. You know, it rains instantly, and you have the car, uh, which is the lightest point. I think it is. If you put it back in black and white, is it brighter than the sky? Yeah, or? yeah, with the lights there. Yeah, and the, the car. So yeah, and you get this. Yeah, you get this big dark shade, but you get your focal point, which is like the most saturated color, and um, the, with the which which is the brightest, which is contrasted by the darkest paint. That dark, yeah, the like the darkest end of the ugly image. So, like this image works. The only thing that I would say is when you zoom in, um, yeah, it, it looks CG. Like, so you can see the 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 tiled texture yeah. that's just going all the yeah, way. Yeah, exactly. He, so. If he just did a little extra paint over on top yeah. of it, it would. It's like it's already. Yeah, you, have the, you have the foundation there, and then you just. I paint would on have top, so much fun with an image exactly. like that. Exactly. <laughs> you, you could have been like finish this image, like all right, hold on, I'm I'm all in. And, yeah. Uh, but yeah, yeah. But the thing is, I I say that because if you don't have this like this strong foundation on your image, uh, it, it it's not going to matter like how much detail, uh, like the detail in in your image. If if your image is not uh, is not reading, uh. There's nothing, especially for math painting, like math painting, it's going to be on screen for what? One, for two half seconds? a second. I know. Yeah, half this a second. Been... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes it's even <laughs> not even a second. Yeah. So if or you don't know, out. like, yeah, well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you, like, you get your blur, you get, there's so much going on. Uh, yeah. So if your image is not like reading, like very, very clearly, uh, it's, it's not going to work very, very well. So yeah, uh, contrast is definitely key for this. Like you have, a nice solid is like he what's smart what he did with smart was that he didn't add too many clouds in the back mm -hmm. so which is a solid yeah, it's color. very simple and yeah. then boom you have the, the house here so your eye like it's it's you know what you're, it's reading right away right like what you're uh -huh. saying so um, i much prefer like seeing an image like that even if it's not like the photo real look uh i prefer an image like that than uh, like a photo bash of things that like it doesn't work even if there's a lot of detail everywhere. Yep. Uh, like it, it doesn't read, doesn't attract me, you know, as, a, as an artist. And, and yeah, like I think everybody is it. Like whether you're conscious, conscious of it or not, um, that's what people are 
are attracted to it. I don't know if you have ever been back to it. An art gallery, uh, you know, like even if you see like a painting very far away that really looks great, you're attracted by by this painting from very yeah. very far apart. If the values are are correct, the, the value structure and the yeah. shapes are well designed. Um, and yeah, this is so, not only for uh, for math painting for concept. Any oh, type it's of everything. Routine. Like you can. If you understand the values and the shape for just creating contrast is where you can get to those, uh, what are the paintings where you just have like shapes and colors? Um, I'm drawing a blank right now. The style of painting. Um, uh, those modern paintings are just literally slaps of a, a, a rectangle with the other color. You know what I'm talking about? Right. Um, Instead of the apprentice impression. Yeah. Anyway. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a fine artist. But uh, yeah, it's like if you if it reads from a, like what you're saying, like that's the eye needs to go. You need to control. Like a lot of people see a painting and be like, "Well, it's just a bunch of lines and and nothing there." But it's just like, well, if you look at it, it's also controlling where your eye is going. You know, exactly. it, he's actually manipulating you because of the contrast and where the shapes yeah. are pushing you. And um, it takes years, you know, to develop this kind of uh, this kind of mastery, and it's all has to do with uh, with um, yeah, with values. If I have anything I have to say to like in the team, people that are studying or uh, that I want to um, like dive into a math case thing is to uh, only work in black and white for a month. I'd say, I uh, told okay, we we'll yeah. only do black and white. Like, yeah. don't even think about color. Uh, I went back to, because um, uh, I was studying in art like a long time ago before going to the, uh, the NAD Center. And, um, which I didn't finish the, the, the my art the, my art degree. And uh, when I was thirty four, I decided that you no, know, I, I want to go back at painting. I want to be good at it. And um, so I, um, there was an artist that had his um, had fan his studio near where I live. And the guy who studied in Italy. The Angel Academy and in Italy, so it like very, very fine art, like old school fine art, uh, and uh, yeah, I ended up doing six years of black and white before, Hebrew, wow. before touching a touching a color, but like a, there was like portrait in it, there was like still life landscape, uh, charcoal, yeah. and then you go to paint, but you only do like value painting. So yeah, value. If you don't master your value, you won't master color image. That's, I, yeah, that's, that's, cool. great. that's why I added the view black and white button. <laughs> yeah, I know. That, that's why I think it's awesome. When I saw that, I said, hey, there's a guy who understands what's a good bit of what, what, yeah. what makes a good image. <laughs> uh, yeah, it would be great if I could add like a levels button where they like crunch the blacks, crunch the whites. That'd be cool. But I don't know if I yeah. any look into that. Um, and even just like maybe a saturation one, see if it's not. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah. So any other ones that you want to talk about on here? Um, yeah, she can uh, go down and yeah, so, so like even one that's yeah, like, you know, cool. now you don't, that you don't like that much, but you would <laughs> maybe like what they can improve on or something like, okay, well, okay. Uh, you, know, you can go up this one that, that catch by, uh, well, it, it does look at it like in an animation. So that could work, but the one right in the middle with the, the, the this one, yeah, this one, the city. Yeah. Yeah. So he's calling it DMP, but this is definitely more, unless it's like an animation D DMP. Yeah, um, that's what I, that's what I, I yeah. was thinking. So like for an animation DMP, if it's like stylized, then like BP, yeah. it could work. But uh, yeah, like if you're going like for like, uh, like realism, yeah, if you put it in black and white, I, I'm, I'm curious to see it in black and white. Yeah, it, it's very busy. Like there's, there's no like, um, Contrast between that. There's definitely like a, the light coming from the the, the right, like the, the yeah. middle right. Yeah. So that's cool. But uh, there's not the, like a clear definition between the like, the, the shadows, especially like let's say like the white belly, if that is not almost in the middle. And yeah, this one. Uh, yeah, there's not much difference between like the, the light part and and the like the shadow part. But um. Yeah, so 
So that yeah, that's like even what, uh, like if you look at here, this like, one, if you yeah. go, yeah, is that the one that you're talking about? I was talking about because, the the right the the one right next to it. Yeah, this okay. one. Okay. Uh, this one doesn't uh, really show the also. form so much. Yeah. Like exactly, you have the yeah. light here, but there's no sh cast shadow going on, yeah. even though the sh the light's coming this direction. Yeah. Um, there's not many cast shadows in general, actually. Now I'm thinking about like there's one strong in the foreground, which is really cool, which gives you the the like yeah, right the, the direction of the light. Yeah, but it's like the the, the other building don't follow kind of the, the same the, the direction and yeah of the they like. And he has so, to watch out for these values here, like that's so bright versus the darks over here. Yeah. Um, so that, that's like, what I would say. Like, it really helps your, uh, your, 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 like, when it's in light, you know that it's a light. When it's of the shadow, you know that it's of the shadow. Yeah. But that's really tough because when you get, like, further away, like, a lot of time doing that big thing, we have to do, like, set extensions and stuff that are further away. It's further away you go, the more, um, to the less contrast you have, but you still have to add this. This no, but it still has to read and keep like where's my light coming from and what is in my light and what is in my, my, my shadow. Yeah. So yeah, well, that's that's a balancing. Yeah. But that's well, really, really, that's really why this is where like three D would come into in the play where it can cheat and help you out a lot by just a simple yeah, absolutely cube, cube, because cube, yeah, cube, I see like cube, perspective and cast, also and stuff the that casting. I'm not sure this perspective it kind of is consistent. I'll see. Yeah, well, it well, seems well, um, stuff, these so. could be actually smaller. Like it could be forced more possibly um, in this ground. Um, I don't know. It's uh, definitely that's why 3D helps so much. <laughs> it's absolutely, basically like a form well, of 3D. Uh, yeah, form of cheating, uh, in a way. even if you're doing like math painting and if you're doing that mostly kind of full Photoshop work, uh, I'd say you learn at least like, yeah, like a piece of base of Blender, or something like that, just to have the. And it's so fun also like to play with the the shapes and like uh, like the volume and just place a spot in there and it already looks amazing. Just yeah. like move your camera around and you can really play with the the composition so it's a really nice way to like to learn it because you like with, let's say you're studying drawing just before you're going to get good at it it's going to take a couple of years mm -hmm. and uh, yeah it, we don't get to experience and to experiment that much like doing like drawing or painting because everything takes so long you know, if you're spending like a week on a painting if it doesn't look the good it, I could look at it yeah. to like start out over or something else, but yeah. like when you're doing like or digital painting, also it's just a nice tool, well, because you can flip your thing around and move your stuff around just to help your. Uh, and that's why I'll be in like in the past like 20 years, the the level of artistry is, has uh, jumped up uh, a lot. It's jumped <laughs> up, yeah, yeah. You can just see like the uh, the, the yeah. painter, the good painter from the 70s and from the 80s, which I have absolute like so much respect for because they, they were, they're working without a death you know and um and um, yeah and but now it's so easy you know to uh, yeah. Hey, yeah like software like, like you can get dirt. a six foot man in your scene put him here and then yeah. you will quickly realize that bike is way too big for this uh uh pole uh like yeah pole. or this pole <laughs> is way too small for an way for, too for small everything and, everything, and everything and the bike is used to compare to a street too and it's like you just put a six foot man. All right. Well, now I know what to compare it to, and then you render out from that perspective, and you have everything in the right scale. So, yeah. scale and value, like even just like the values on here versus the values of here and there. Like, I feel like a lot of students are afraid to push the foreground value to make it darker. Um, they need it. They, you get a little scared when you're when you're first learning, right? But yeah, so yeah, I have this a, I have this uh, um, thing here where we can comment with markups. Oh, good, okay, cool. And um, I don't have it working with the, the Wacom tablet and you can't type on it yet, but you can draw um, or reset that drawing or pick a different color if you need to. Okay. So what happened? Um, let's do that again. Can do a red hue with the people. Yeah, so if I do like know. a, I guess a blue would be good on this one. Yeah, let's do a blue. Yeah. Like, is there anything like you say, uh, scale, like I could circle this and then you can type uh scale stuff <laughs> like you can type type your comments on here um but is there anything that you, you would like to for me to type in here just so you can see this 
Uh, yeah, Anything definitely like scale for, for this, like the, the also the, the sign, like in the foreground. Well, it, it depends. What, what is your reference? Like, uh, or like, like, because even though, like, okay, all about that, but what is, what is your focal point of this image? Like, I don't know. Is, is it like the, the signs and the foregrounds? If like the, the back, well, what is the story that you're trying to tell? Like, like the, the shit comes first, you know? But, um, um, yeah. Yes. So basically, yeah, it's just, reorganizing like the values maybe just that that would be my main thing that would really be my main name uh, my, my main i mean i'll say down. like the green circles are representing values and the blues are representing scale um okay yeah yeah that would that would work yeah so values uh the um any like this this building you were talking about yeah, it's just that. Yeah, I, I, the, the, my, I think my big problem with this building when I was talking about the light, but you know, those are horizontal lines in the shadow are the same value as the um, as your the, the sign that is lit. So that's why it's really throwing oh, me off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I see what you're saying. So you talk, uh, yeah, those. So these lines over here. So if I just go uh, in the shadow part, you would like to read it right, right next to it in the shadow. Oh, you're talking about here. Yeah, uh, yeah, the, the bright lines. Oh, the bright lines. Oh, I didn't yeah. even notice those bright lines. <laughs> yeah, they, they, they are as bright as the. Uh, How so did that, I not notice that? Oh my goodness! <laughs> yeah, is it that like yeah, you have a very dark value and you have a value that is as bright as the face that is lit by the sun? So that, yes. that, that's what really is throwing me off because it's, yeah. it's very contrasted to me, like my eyes. And it's going no, there absolutely. first because that you should, your... yeah yeah that's definitely that's the same kind of thing here it's like there's no no cast shadow here and there's no cast mm -hmm. like this it should be in shadow so for sure so let's say blue circles be careful or watch for watch out for scale the uh, I think of their telephone poles Like it depends. Like if your telephone calls, like your happy with the scale, just reduce the scale in your bike. And yeah, everything signs. else would have to but be reduced. For it sure. really depends yeah. on what the like. Yeah, well, well, yeah, I see what, what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, what yeah. you want to be in scale, really? More or cool. I haven't done that in a while. Like your comments on stuff. What was that? I, hope, I just hope I'm not going to make sure the person who did get me. Uh, well, no, no, no. no. Uh, so this is the whole point of this site. It's like. The reason why, so your name will have a blue check mark on it, right? Um, so when you make a comment, they'll know to take your comment more seriously and okay. more to heart than to say someone else commenting because they'll know, like, like, well, this guy has a lot of experience. He really knows what he's talking about, right? Okay. Um, oh, interesting. And okay. Because in like our station, you know, you get comments, everyone has an opinion, you're not really sure who should I take. Like, yeah, you could take, you could definitely take other people's. Uh, uh, thoughts and for sure, but when you see, the, I th I just think when you know when it's from a pro or a senior, you know, you're like, okay, this guy really, it's a different type of level of critique. You know what I mean? Yeah, uh, absolutely. Oh, so I, 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 so they shouldn't take it like if this is all about learning. We're all kind of learning together. That's why I want to yeah. add these features to like you can also point out and be like, oh, that area is awesome. You know, it doesn't always have to be like, hey, circle this and fix it. No, no, <laughs> but, for sure. Yeah, yeah. but yeah, this guy's a student, it. so he, he would totally be. He's looking for this most likely. Uh -huh. um, shrink everything else uh around it if you want the pole to be that size um and then shift them to make it next line and green circles watch out for the values the uh then the the white the glass white uh building as really Right, highlights in the shadow, shadows where it should be uh, darker. And other values are darker when uh, uh, in the distance when they should be brighter. Ah, something like that. Um, and that's why I, I really, it would be really helpful once I add like a text in here. So then you can put it arrow there and say brighten up the value brighten up the blacks arrow here calm down the highlights you know what i mean but for mm -hmm. now 
<laughs> I have this, this. This is what it is. And yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll I'll add to it. <laughs> yeah, Just, for sure, it's, for it's sure. New I mean, yeah, it's um, a, it's new and it, it, it's right. It's already super nice. So uh, yeah, it just. Uh, Keep up at it, and then I think yeah, it will rough something when it's selling. I don't get it. All right, so that was, uh, hopefully that yes, wasn't a that's... boring part for people watching this. <laughs> Just wanted <laughs> to, you know, to have an opportunity. Maybe you won't see the video, so you might as well. Um, cool. So, I don't know. Is there anything else you want to bring up, talk about? Um, you want to show anything or... Well, I'm sure you think that would believe my head. I mean, pretty much everything is on my end, on my which side. All right. Okay, well, then, then I guess uh, we can call this uh, interview uh, a day. <laughs> so it was really great getting to know you, uh, learning about your your history. Um, yeah, so did I. You know, it was it was really outside. If you want to do that some other uh, some other time, I will be more than happy. As I say, I'm, I'm always happy to, to talk about death. And yeah, for sure. Like if you have any, um, if you have any, like if you want to show us some like Houdini tricks or like you know build a set in Houdini, that would be an awesome uh, video we could go over. Or I'm, something. I'm not quite there yet, but uh, okay. <laughs> maybe in the like maybe in the next year, if, okay. you know, because okay. I think I'm definitely going to switch my uh, like personal project by plan to. Uh, Houdini, and actually you can get your uh, like Houdini. You can download it, the, like and the learning edition for free, or even like I think the uh, we get the um, and uh, I don't remember how the call it Houdini in ND, I think. I mean, it's like a two hundred dollar per year, yeah, 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 something yeah. like that. Yeah. But yeah, it's nothing for yeah. what you get, you know. Yeah, uh, like there's always um, Blender that I wanted to to, but you know. You have to you have to choose your battles. Yeah, I know. For me, I always say learn Maya first because studios use Maya, and then yeah. you can always transition into Blender and Houdini yeah. um, more easily. Because you know everyone's yeah. jumping on Blender right away. I'm like, uh, studios are looking for Maya. <laughs> There's can't. more and more studios uh, that are uh, switching. I in Montreal. You're sorry to. Yeah, uh, because yeah, yeah the, the thing is that Maya, it's good, but it's it's really really starting to be old. And there's yeah. a lot of stuff that with shields that all I I think you know, the main reason why people are still using Maya is that in the, you know, all their 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 pipeline the pipeline built, is all uh, built uh, into around it. Maya their tool the internal yeah. tool everything is like, it is on Maya but uh, yeah I think I think Houdini is going to be the the great the, the great disruptor yeah it sounds like a lot of them are actually going more for is Houdini um, but. Again, I, it's the pipeline, right? You spend all that money building your tools and everything, and it's and it's in my mind. If I you mean, go to, done, if you have a, what was that? Yeah, and, and it works. I mean, you, you've done uh, all of those like movies yeah. on the uh, like a hundred. And you have the support your, like, as well, like Blender. You don't really yeah. have the support, so if something That's breaks, true. you can't yeah. just call them up. Yeah. Um, unless I know that they tried to incorporate like the extra, you can pay extra or something for some type of support, but I don't think it's at the same okay. level. As I hear but, that as a uh, as a complaint a lot with studios. Um, but yeah, so share it with your your colleagues about the site. Um, yeah, I, yeah, absolutely. And yeah, uh, sure. there's also there's also a cool thing I forgot to point out. I just like to point this out for. Um, for anyone that's watching, it's just just so they get familiar with the the site more. But there's also a uh, income survey, or <laughs> an anonymous income survey. So no one, whatever, uh, put stuff in, they won't know who's doing it or anything. But you can filter it to like what skill, or uh, how much they have per hour, per day, month, yearly. Because I feel like a lot of artists just don't really know, understand what they're worth. So I just want to give more of the power oh, to the artist, right? So. Um, you can import it, input it here. You can um, filter, say, map painter. I don't have many in uh, that submitted yet, so it's not going to be a lot. But let's say I can hear. Um, oh, what's going on here? I think you hit the clear. Oh, I hit clear and says submit. <laughs> I have this uh, stop share in the way, so I've missed it. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. So there's just one input for here right now, but. Eventually, they'll have like, you know, a lot and you can get the average income and then you can also get these like anomalies where you find out what this guy made this much. I didn't know you can make that much. So like if you did this, say, a senior or something, you know, you get more in here. Um, so it's just, 
it's uh, hopefully a database that we can grow and yep. and people well, will be able to negotiate mm-hmm. better with um, to find. That's in the, USD. It's go. all in USD. It's it? USD. Um, I know that a lot of people live in Canada, but I didn't know how to convert it. It's depending. I thought it would get too messy if it was. Yeah, but, so I just figured exactly. maybe I'll just get rid of USD and just say income because in general, let's say okay, you make a hundred k in Canada. You're probably going to say this make 100K in America, but it's USD, right? So I don't, maybe it's still the same numbers in the end, I think. Uh, yeah, it's something I, I'll have to maybe think about later, but for now, yeah, USD, like, it, I, yeah, these the conversion and rates, especially global nowadays. Currency, so, I mean, it's all, it's all right. Well, it's, in Canada if, versus... If someone it, wants to convert it... Uh, yeah, just like if you're making 100K can, Canadian, just put 100K. I'll just... Yeah. I think I might just delete this because, yeah, if you got 100K in Canada, you're making 100K in, in the USA. I, I, I think I'm just going to delete it. Yeah, that's probably the best thing. But. I'm curious. Uh, where uh, where do you live in, in the States? I live in Tennessee. Um, yeah, I live in Tennessee because I was in uh, Canada for five to six years. I had was in Nova Scotia and Montreal and Toronto. Uh, I never got to be in um, uh, Vancouver, Vancouver, but I was also in LA for like five to six years uh, before okay. Canada. Uh, but now since I work remote, uh, I am in Tennessee. Wanted to uh, get out of the cold winters of 80% uh, out of the years, winter. <laughs> so yeah. now, it's, now I have four seasons, it's nice. And it's closer to my family, which I grew up in Virginia. Yeah, that's cool. Um, yeah, no, I, I, admit, I admit that like working like remote really brought my thing like the people closer to their family. Because yeah, we yeah. have people that, that are working at it in Japan from their home in Japan. And we don't really see like the, the difference. So, Yep. Why not let everyone? Why not let them work and let be close to their their, their family? Because then, yeah, like, uh, especially in a place like uh, the Lang, uh, man, in the whole uh, team, seventy team, I think we're like five or six in Quebec. Like the rest, it's all like people that are that are like came yep. from uh, from Germany, from uh, America, Japan. Yeah. Mexico, so it's from all all around the place. A lot from Europe, also London, or But uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, like I mean, it's uh, for me, I just I got tired of living in the city in general. It's just the affordability yeah. and just yeah. not seeing stars when I walk outside. Like it's just <laughs> I couldn't stand it. Like I, I work in Montreal, <laughs> but I I live quite far away from Montreal. Like my commute takes me like a, almost two hours to to, to be. Oh so wow! So that, that's why, like uh, like uh, to me. The uh, hybrid, like uh, working from yeah. home and working on the studio, to yeah. me it's perfect because at least I got to like move a little bit. Uh, because yeah, working always at uh, well, at home, it kind of makes me depressed sometimes. Uh, but uh, yeah, just like leaving the, the house and go in the city, it changes the the move, it changes the environment, the sound a little bit different. But sometimes I get to milk and gulps. Yeah, but so yeah, I think for for me that that's where that's been working the best. But yeah, when I was working like at Cinecite, I was there five days a week, and like my, I had like an hour and a half, two hours commute to go. Yeah, and it's to brutal. It. It's so brutal. Like how can well, like, you the get family to structure something. the? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I, I did a lot of reading. Uh, like I finished uh, Breath of the Wild, uh, Zelda, <laughs> the Switch. Like I would yeah. never do that. Like if I would not <laughs> commuting, you know. But yeah. uh, so I mean, yeah, you you just find because I was sitting on the train. Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it, that's that's pretty cheap. Yeah, I hadn't played video games in so long until now. I'm in the working games. So I'm like, oh, I got I gotta get my I gotta get back into it. So I forced myself to start playing games again, and it's like it's I so fun. I thought about <laughs> it. But yeah, yeah, I know. Like the, I, there are some great games. But also, look at the the only console that I'm playing is the Switch because it, it's the only console yeah, that I can actually take it with you. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. But uh, yeah, man, business. It's no, it's it's a great time, I think, to to work and to me and like the I'm like those great games. I started Crisis Core with a huge like Final Fantasy Seven, uh, like generation time. So like Crisis Core, it's like oh my god, something yeah, big it, 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 going it's back to this universe, now. especially with <laughs> Unreal Five and all those engines coming out in the future. Five, yeah, it's nuts. But, yeah, uh, Unreal and all and the AI and just. Like I don't, I have no idea even what's, what's, I, I cannot like see like in five years, like 
what I how I am going to work or like, yeah so yeah, yeah like it, are you going to be in a, in a, in a gaming engine that's the question <laughs> I've been born who in knows more, I mean, like five, five to ten years like it's unless we have a new renderer that does you know well although the uh, Octane I believe just announced their version of Nanite oh, so okay. well so they'll have their renderer but with crazy amount of geo yeah um so we'll see it's gonna be really interesting the faster the better please <laughs> yeah so. it's funny because like uh, like in my time you know like 20 years ago like renders were taking like half an hour per frame i know <laughs> 20 years later it's still taking like 20 uh, 20 minutes yeah. per uh, for afraid yeah. it's just that we're throwing so much uh, throw stuff so no much i didn't have it yeah that, that, like it I'll doesn't just get it, faster it overnight <laughs> yeah exactly yeah, just go to bed and 20 minutes is, it, it's quite a low uh it, <laughs> it, it's not that but like i've seen like a 24 hour spring something no yeah uh, i've some had stuff i've had stuff where i just it takes a full day and i'm just like i just threw all the you no optimization because i don't care so I'm just doing yeah. a single like a painting on it, like whatever. I'll just sleep and let it render over the weekend. I'm like, okay, it, that, that's the beauty of the MP. <laughs> if she had some like a lot of time, it just like you don't need to worry too much like about the sampling and like the, yeah. the noise just, and well, stuff. You just, just crank it all, <laughs> just crank it yeah. all, and uh, yeah, you just render it. You have one frame, you paint over it, you project in, and yeah, you, all right, I'm done. Got it done. We'll have to, to worry about anything else. <laughs> all right. All right, cool, man. Well, it's awesome, yep. uh, awesome talking with you. Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, so I guess we'll, we'll maybe do this again. Um, and yeah. I can't wait to see your your work. What else you you show on the site? Yeah, and, I think uh, I'll, I'll go into uh, upload like uh, concept stuff also that I uh, cool. I, yeah. I did. I, like I really concentrated on the the, the matte painting stuff. But uh, yeah, if you want to do that or some other yeah, if concept, you have but... even just um. So the site also has. I'm not sharing my screen right now. Let's see. Uh, just real quick before. So it's not just VFX stuff. So you have um. Uh, you know, stylized environments, you have photography, you have movie stills, you have traditional map paintings, you have traditional uh, paintings. So when, um, oh, that shouldn't be in there. Well, I'll have to change those tags. Uh, if you have any, like, you know, environment paintings that you want to put up in here, you have any photography you've taken in here. Because the thing is that now you're at your Atmo approved senior, I trust your eye to, to be like, okay, I found this cool image on the internet. Let me just plug it, uh, put it on here, and I can be like, okay, it's probably gonna be a good image because you're an approved senior, right? Um, because I want it to also be a ref a giant reference library, not just your personal artwork. So I just want to be like, okay, uh, an image from a film. Can this type in sunset? And you get like films, you get paintings, you get, uh, and then you can also do it per category. So it just it's a combination of like you know, in in environment Google and. Yeah. Uh, and personal art portfolio stuff. So um, interesting. Yeah, and because then you can also you know add images to your own reference projects to say like you have a yeah. uh, um, a, 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 a gig or whatever it says like you want a moon or something, and you just search yeah, you build, moon yeah, like and you your, can just... your mood bar. The you have your own mood bar. Yeah, directly exactly. on, the, on the website. Yeah, awesome. So cool. Um, yeah, so feel free to just upload whatever you want. And uh, yeah, so it's good talking to you. Nice to meet you. And thanks yes. for coming on to the Atmo uh, interview uh, podcast, I guess you can call it. It's not really a podcast, it's a video interview. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, right. it's my pleasure. Uh, thank you for uh, for your interest in the uh, looking to the reach out. Cool. And really looking right, forward man. to the, um, the, the, the feature of uh, of uh, Atmo via Facebook film. Yeah. Thank you. Well, let's, let's get right. it growing. <laughs> yes. All right. Thanks, man. Thanks for coming. Bye-bye. Right. Have a good night. Yeah.